Hello chess family, it's me NASA Master, Jesse James, and today we're going over another very good and instructive game for the Kali. Here we're going to be learning how to play the Kali system from the white perspective and definitely talk about what black's plans are against it. Now this variation particularly is against the knight takes e4 variations, which uh, black typically plays. Now I'm going to show you for black some better alternatives to play, and then what happens if they do play this knight takes e4 variation, how you can conquer. In this game, white plays a tremendous game, almost a refutation game I'd say, meaning it's just if they play this, you play this, and then you win. White gets two double x slams in the game. Hopefully you can find it in the process. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. Here we go. We start off with pawn to d4. And black plays knight f6. A nice move here for black. Uh, definitely a master move because we're not letting white know what, uh, what setup we're going to be using yet. And here white plays knight f3. Now this is a very good move because in the collie we're trying to control the e5 square right away. Also a hint for black. If your opponent plays this, they're most likely going to be playing the TLC. For those who don't know the TLC, it's either going to be the Tory, the London, or the Kali, okay? Either the bishop goes to g5 for the Tory, they play bishop f4 for the London system, or they play pawn to e3 to just keep the Kali system. Now, all these uh, positions are pretty much the same as far as the pawn structure. The only difference is the placement of the bishop. So a lot of the ideas can really uh, float in between, and so they, they a lot of times they even transpose. Anyways... After knight to f3, black plays a good move, pawn to e6, keeping his cards close to him. And here we're going to go ahead and play, I'll say it's an x-clam, pawn to e3. We are now officially in the Kali system. I know there's some people already asking, hey, why would I choose to put my bishop inside the uh, pawn chain rather than outside, like in the Tory or the London? Well, there's definitely some benefits. There's going to be less preparation on your end because, well, there's really nothing black can do to stop the Kali from mapping, right? It's like pawn e3 on move 3. How could you possibly stop that as black? Why is going to be having a guaranteed uh, easy setup so they don't have to learn much prep, and it's going to be an equal position. I mean, maybe white will come out slightly worse just because they have less space, but white doesn't have to do too much prep, and it's an easy way to play. In fact, if your opponent doesn't know how to play this, as we'll see in this game, you get very good attacking chances. Okay, here we go. Black plays pawn d5, and I know as a Kali player myself, I'm very happy to see this because now we're in standard territory. I'm sure at this point, white can start blitzing out the moves as fast as possible. It's white to move. There's two main moves that typically get played here. We're either going to develop the bishop or develop the knight. But I believe white's move is definitely the best here. Which one do you think? Bring out the bishop or bring out the knight next? Here, definitely bring out the bishop. Why? The bishop is always going to be placed on on this d3 square. On d3, it's going to help prepare pawn to e4 later on, so we can try and let our bishop out. But then also, it's attacking h7. And you might be saying, why is h7 important? Remember, when your opponent is castled, the weakness of h7 is the biggest weakness. So here, we already got one piece aiming toward that weakness already. And here, if you played the knight out, well, the knight can be played out pretty early. But sometimes in the collie, we can play pawn c4. And the knight can go to c3, which is a technically better square as it controls more squares. Now, it won't happen in this game, but there are certain variations we will go over later on where this is actually the right move and the best way to play the Kali. Here, black went ahead and played bishop e7. And I don't like this move so much. I definitely think bishop d6 is best because remember I said e5 is the weak square? On this, we're trying to get control over the e5 square as much as possible. So um, bishop b 7 just is a bit too tame. Someone might be asking, well, what do you play here? Should we go knight to d2 or pawn c3? Here we're definitely going to be playing knight to d2. Typically, you don't play pawn c3 until they play pawn c5. It's almost automatic. c5, c3. You know, you want to give your bishop the escape square, and that's why we will do it. All right. Here, um, black went ahead and castled. And here, white plays a very nice move. Here, white plays queen e2. If you don't play this, then you should definitely add it to your idea list. Queen e2 is going to help out preparing pawn to e4. And white's going to try to go for a kingside attack as soon as possible. And this is where black starts to make lots of mistakes. Now here, black does play a good move here, uh, knight bd7. Black should be looking for two ways to get equality. Either try to achieve e5 or try to uh, achieve c5. Both these moves will put pressure on the d4 pawn. So here, white does not waste at all. White goes ahead and plays pawn to e4 and it's all but forced that well black is going to take here but you must take 
correctly here. Because if you don't take, white will achieve e5. Now the knight will move. I'll go ahead and just make a move here. Let's say black is tame and makes a bad move like c6. Now white gets the advantage easily with pawn to e5. And you can see this beautiful pawn structure pointing toward the king side. The knight needs to move. You can play pawn c3 here. I mean, yeah, the knights are just beautiful. The bishops are beautiful. Um, white is going to have a very good game here. So here, you're pretty much all but expected to take. But again, you have to do this the correct way. And the game black does play. D takes e4, which is good. Knight takes e4, which is good. But here, black makes the mistake. Uh, I would say probably 80%, 90% of those that don't play the Kali were, are going to go ahead and play. Knight takes e4, like that was played in this game, and we'll get into a very, very challenging situation. Don't get me wrong. Against computer, I think they can play this pretty well. But against a human, it's very hard to... Uh, say that this is even because white has so much attacking potential here now before I go into that I want to go ahead and say After this D takes on e4 here knight takes on e4 There are some moves that you can play here to give yourself uh, some good uh, to, to give yourself some good options for instance There's two moves that you should be looking to play here is black b6 and c5 now I will suggest to play c5 first here because remember try to crack the center as soon as possible remember the old adage if they attack on the wing, in this case, it's king side, you should try to attack in the center. If they play like something like knight takes c5, perfect, they're losing attacking pieces. So a lot of people here will probably just play something like c3, but perfect, we'll go ahead and take, and pawn takes back, and now they have the isolated pawn. Now, if they play knight takes, you should be happy. They've lost the center, they have no center pawns, black is already doing good here. So here, definitely look at that move of c takes d4 here for white and then black just keeps it calm and plays something like b6 here and develop your bishop a lot of people will see the trade and they will make it instantly and get into this forcing losing line at least forcing to me i feel uh as as uh as black over here so in the game what happens well again black did not see the ideas that playing c5 and b6 and goes ahead and plays knight takes white to move what do we play here simple chess queen takes on e4 threatening checkman in h7 What's the natural move here? I'm pretty sure everyone's saying it, knight to f6. But by playing like this, you've allowed the queen to enter on the king side. And now white has a simple move, queen to h4. You allowed the queen to go e2 to e4 to h4. Now we have one, two, three, four pieces ready here to attack on the king side. And we already have a simple threat here. Bishop over to g5, which will then attack the knight. And well, if the knight leaves, h7 is going to get checkmate. So white has a very easy attacking scheme here. All right, black goes ahead and goes for the counterplay. Pawn to c5 here, definitely a good move. And here, white goes ahead and tries to kill it. D takes on c5, and believe it or not, uh, a mistake here, bishop takes on c5. Why is this a mistake? The pin is definitely going to be bad for them. So here, maybe uh, the computer is suggesting just to play queen c7 here. Keep up options with this over here. Okay, so back to the game. After bishop takes on c5, here white did not play the best move. You're supposed to play bishop to g5 and get into a very good position because of the pin. Notice because the bishop is gone here, you don't uh, you don't want to go h6. This is terrible, as we'll see in the game. Uh, g6 is going to be losing because you just take the knight. So white is just much better in this position. Here white just makes a nice sensible move here. They go ahead and castle. I like this move. Uh, computer doesn't like it as much, but I, I think it's a, a, a good reasonable move here. But here, black just makes a, a simple-looking move. He sees the idea of, G5, uh, of uh, bishop to g5 here, so he plays h6. It is now white to move and do the first double x clam. What do you play here? All right, guys, if you haven't already, go ahead and give us that like and subscribe. So what do you play here? Here we get to play the beautiful... Da, 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 da. Bishop takes on h6. I know you guys were saying it. One of the problems of playing h6, especially in these lines, is that you could just sacrifice the bishop and open it up. At this point, it just becomes like a forced win here. I mean, black plays pretty decent moves to try to stop the attack, well, <laughs> but just gets repelled pretty easily. I mean, if you don't take back, you're just losing. So, pawn takes on h6. Queen takes on h6. Now we have ideas about bishop to h7 or queen h7 checkmate. So this knight is very important. Black makes a move that I think is pretty reasonable here. Black goes ahead and tries to play pawn to e5. One of the ideas is trying to bring the bishop out over here and maybe just get out to defend. I mean, this is such a, a, a hard position to play here. Um, after e5, the, another threat may be, be looking at e4. Not really, as bishop can really just take, and we'll be doing checkmate pretty soon over here. 
is uh nope well let's uh it's it's now white's turn let's go ahead and continue the attack what do we play here let's keep adding fuel to the fire knight the g5 another piece threatening the checkmate square over here and actually a force win here too black goes ahead and plays Queen to e7. He's trying to move the queen in a little bit closer to defend and maybe allow the rook to come out so maybe queen fa can get played. All right, white's turn. What do you play here? Here we're going to go ahead and bring in more pieces. Develop with a threat. Rook a e1. Now, if you see the threat here by white, you've already pretty much won the game. If you don't, you should definitely try and calculate. What does rook a e1 do? I won't tell you just yet. Here, black went ahead and played. Rook to d8 makes sense, but now it is actually a forced checkmate here for white. All right, white to move. What do you play here? Here is our second double x clam of the game. All right, hopefully you saw it. Here you get to play. Rook takes on e5. Dear Lord, this is such a beautiful idea. This queen is defending a critical square, the f7 square. And here, if they take, they just get checkmated in three. Here you get to play bishop h7 check. Here, the king is forced over to h8. Of course, if the knight takes, it's checkmate at 1. And now you just get to play. Knight takes on f7 for check in mate. Dear lord, that queen needs to stay there to defend. So, of course, black did not want to take back and said, I mean, at this point, the game really is pretty much over. Black did play the best defense and played. Rook takes on d3. But now, I mean, now we just got a very easy win here for material. Rook takes on e7, taking the queen, and the game finishes pretty fast here. Bishop takes. Pawn takes over here on d3. Bishop f5, uh, a nice move developing and also trying to overprotect the checkmate square idea. Rook e1, attacking the bishop. Bishop to d8. Knight to e4, simple idea, making trades. Also, another nice idea is to try to get the rook lift with rook e3 to g3. Bishop g6. Pawn to h3. Let's just take our time here. There's no need to uh, make any kind of uh, mistakes like back rank checkmates. Knight d5. Pawn to h4. The new idea. We're going to push this forward and kick the bishop off its good square. Bishop c7. Pawn to g3. Bishop d8. And pawn to h5. At this point, uh, black just went ahead and resigned. I mean, this is a very easy losing position. The back rank is going to be very weak pretty soon. Knight d6 is coming, maybe even knight to g5. I mean, well, it's just a very nice game altogether. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this. This was a, an instructive game about how to play the calling system. Remember, whenever you're playing this from the white perspective, remember this queen e2 idea. Remember, you need to play e4 at some point. And if they do play this terrible move of knight takes back, remember the maneuver queen takes, queen h4. And you're going to get a very good position. Also, don't forget, h6, sacrifice the bishop for the double x clam and open up that king. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>